All right, everybody, welcome to episode 3.5, not episode 4 yet, but 3.5 of the series. So today I'm just going to be going over adding a just a couple new minor additions to the game to make it look more polished, as well as addressing something I saw in the comments earlier. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on adding in a custom backpack system which we can use Satchel for this, which is just an open source modern backpack system that I'll also have linked in the comments. So let's go ahead and install it. So you notice that, okay, we can go over here to create creator hub store and just install it like so. And we can get the model and go in studio, open our toolbox and add it in. Like so, and it's fine. So we want to move our satchel to starter player scripts, like so. And remove this, oops, remove this, and if you play the game, you notice that we have our custom backpack, like so. And if we go to seeds, and buy it, you notice that it gets updated, like so. So yeah. And let me show you what it looks like without this custom backpack system. So if we move the server storage and play the game, you notice that the current backpack looks extremely dry. So that's one thing done, adding in the custom backpack system. Another thing I want to do is address what I saw in the comment sections, which is uh, something about having, um, of assigning cached modules to every single module script, which we're doing here, which now that I look back is really inefficient in a way. And we could definitely make it more easier to do. But you notice here we have to do service, cache modules, data service, as well as over here to do it as well. So in order to fix that, we can add a module script here called cached modules, like so. So this is going to be our shared um, module script for all of these services to access. Because you'll remember in previous video, we had an issue with the recursiveness of module scripts where let's say you require data service up here and seed service, but in data service, you require the seed service. You, Roblox doesn't allow you to do that because you're essentially requiring a script, which that script is requiring that script, if that makes any sense. So in order to fix that, we can create a new module in server called cached modules, and then go over here to our server script. And instead of assigning or initiating a cache modules in every single module that we have, we can say something like, let's see, right here, we can say require script at cache modules. And then we just want to set the cache modules to the cache modules that we have right here. Or whoops, we can say local required module requires script at cache modules. And then we can say required module is equal to the cache modules that we have. So essentially, so if we go over here and we do warn required module, like so, we play the game. You notice that these are all of our required modules now. And let's see what the issue was with this. Money service that they loaded. Oh yeah, it's because we removed the cache modules thing over here. The part where we just assigned it. So now that we've gotten that the cache modules thing in here, we can look up everything that has to do with the cache modules and replace it. So you notice in here, we got all of this right here, but now we can just say local cached modules like so. Require script.parent that server or that parent that server that cache modules like so and then now we can just remove all of this right here and that should work and over here we can do the same thing we can just say and we also want to remove cache modules from here we want to remove them here as well and just say local cached modules Require script.parent.server.cache modules. And we want to replace it. And then 
once again for seed service, remove it and say local cached modules. Script.parent.server.cached modules. And finally in here, we will do the same. Yep, and that should be good. So now if we play the game, whoops, let's see what the issue is. Cache modules, all right. So you notice that when we play the game, you'll see that our data service is printing out nothing inside of the cache modules. So this is because you can't really set a, a module that you require to another table. So the one thing we can do is go over to cache modules and create a new table in here called cache. And then right here, we can say required module dot cache is equal to our cache modules. So you notice when we play the game and look at where we did our print statement, you'll see that, okay, all the modules have been cached now. So if we remove the print statement, we can say cache modules dot cache and then do it like so. And that should be good. All right, now if we play the game, you see that nice, all our data loads and we have everything back in here. And if we try to buy something, you see that the item gets uploaded or updated and we forget to restock and it works. So yeah. Now that we um, have transferred everything over to just a shared module, a shared cache module, we can now, um, I wanna actually review what all of the code does as of thus far. So first off, we can start in our main GUI. So obviously we have our button TPs, which for our garden TP, we check, we loop through all the plots in workspace, which are these right here. And then we check if the player owns the plot, if it's taken and the owner is equal to player ID. If that's the case, then we teleport them to the plot because that's their plot. And similarly, we'll just um, teleport the player to the TP parts for either the cell NPC or the seeds NPC. And then now we can go over here to our shekels updater, which just checks when the leader stats is updated and animates it accordingly. And now in a seed frame handler, this is where we update all of our stock and things like that, on the client side at least. And you'll notice that we use bindable events. What they do is that bindable events allow for you to communicate between client to client. So they're on the same side of the spectrum in a way. They're different from remote events because remote events only allow you to communicate from this, uh, the client to server, or vice versa from the server to client. But here, you'll notice that in our prompt clients, we fire the bindable event on the client, and then this uh, event listener right here listens for when we fire it and toggles the seed shop accordingly. And here is when we just update our restock timer. And yeah, that's it. And then now in our server, which we just did, we created a new shared module for all of these services to access called cached modules, which holds all of our cached modules that we have. And in here, in our data service, whoops. In our data service, we just loaded our data. And this is also where we handled whenever the player's data is loaded. So you see that, okay, when the player's data is loaded, we run the function for each of the services telling us, okay, the player's data is loaded, and then we wanna do something with the data. And of course, when the player's character gets added, we also want to check um, for things of that accordingly as well. So you see, for example, the inventory service, which in this case adds the tools to the player's backpack. When the player's character gets added and their data has also been loaded. And if we go to inventory service, you see that we have a function called character added, which it loops through all of our inventory and then creates a new tool. 
and in our money service. Oh wait, going back. Inventory updated is used while the game is running. So for example, when the character buys a new tool or buys a new seed or buys a new gear, it will update the name of the tool accordingly. If there's a tool, otherwise we'll create a new tool. And in our plot service, this is pretty basic and it's where we handle all of our plot things that we have so far. So we want to get the plot this function is gets the plot that is owned by the player argument that's passed in. And get available plot just loops through all of the plots and sees which one's available. And you'll notice that we have our data loaded function in here, which if you recall is ran when the player's data is loaded. So when the player's data is loaded, we find an available plot and we set that plot to the player. We want to make sure that the player actually owns the plot now. And of course, when the player gets removed from the game, we want to clear that plot. Which in here, you'll see when the player gets removed, we clear it. And then now moving on to our seed service, we made a function called give seed and restock seeds. And in our init function, which if you recall, is automatically called right here. The init function starts all of the basic game functions that we want. Which for example, in this case, we have a buy seed remote event and we have our restock timer right here, which restocks the seeds. So hopefully that sort of helped you out a little bit. This video is gonna be kind of short and just an overview of what we did in the previous video, as well as adding a couple minor tweaks to the game, like our custom backpack system, which you see right here, which gives it the game a more modern look. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed this sort of shorter video and see y'all in episode four.